What's up guys and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, you probably have no idea who I am, what I do, and for the most part, that doesn't really matter for the express purpose of this video. But for a brief synopsis, my name is Tim. I co-own a brand called Ritual Apparel. I also co-own a screen printing and dropship service called True Bold Print. And I have been designing t-shirts for over a decade. I've designed for bands, brands, record labels, zines, anything you can think of. I've probably had my hands in it at one point. If you're not new to this channel and you've seen some of our other videos, you'll know that this is a very different kind of content for us. I wanted to start to use the YouTube channel as a vehicle for education and one of my parts in that is design. I love what I do, my job in rituals, design and creative direction, and I'm just really excited to share it with you guys. Over the course of the years of me designing, I've picked up a lot of specialty knowledge on creating vibes and going off of mood boards. And this is kind of one of those effects that's very usable in that direction. It is an ink bleed, photocopy, Xerox looking kind of thing. If you have a client or you're designing something for your own brand and you want to have that vintage photocopy look, this effect is fun. It's easy to apply and it's really going to be easy for you to follow along with it. So let's get into it. All right, so once you're into your computer, the first thing you obviously want to do is open up Photoshop, go to create new. I'm going to be using a 15 by 16 inch artboard. It's just what I always use and it matches our screen size at Truebold. I'm going to immediately go up to view, new guide layout, and mine is already set for two columns, two rows. I always do this just to make sure everything is nice and centered. I'm also going to unlock this background layer because that annoys me. And then I'm going to take my art, which is over here on my desktop, I'm gonna drag it to the PS icon on my toolbar. I'm just gonna open it up in Photoshop and then I'm going to drag my artwork on to my new artboard. Make sure it's nice and centered and pretty. And then I'm just gonna get rid of this shit because I don't need it. Then I'm going to immediately make that a smart object. This just means that we can resize it, move it around, and it won't lose quality. We can also kind of go back and edit some effects that we've done in the past. So let's start causing some problems. First thing we're going to do is go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. The goal here is to kind of make it look like you're looking through the wrong pair of glasses. Don't want it to be too intense or not intense enough, just somewhere right in the middle. I like 23.3, we'll go with that. Then immediately go to image, adjustments, threshold. The more you slide it to the left, the more white you're going to get it. The more you slide it to the right, the more big and bulky and stupid looking it's going to be. So I really want mine to be touching a lot pretty significant amount mostly because I feel like those old printers just kind of always put too much ink out on the page so that's really important to the authenticity of this effect so I'm gonna go with threshold level 158 and I'm gonna hit OK the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called the displacement map I've played around with putting this at different stages but uh, I really like it early on because I feel like you get the most bang for your buck out of it. So what you're going to do is slide on over to Google. Um, and it's cool to use Google on this because it's going to be unrecognizable what the image is. But you can, if you're worried about it, you can also use free resources like Unsplash or Pexels. Um, I'll try to remember to link those down in the description. I've already picked out the uh, texture that I would like. But an important thing to remember in picking out yours is you want something that's high contrast, like pretty black and white. Photoshop is going to read it better that way. And if you pick something like this, you're going to have to do a lot of color color correction and I just don't want you guys to have to deal with that because I care about you and your feelings. All right. After you've selected your image, I already have mine saved. Go to file, new, and copy your artboard size that you just used. Drag your artwork right on into it. It's fine if it stays a smart object. Resize it and try to get the dirtiest part of your texture on here. Uh, remembering that this is a distortion effect. You go to file, save as and I'm going to hit it with the good old one two three save because I'm lazy and not keeping this file but if you want to keep yours just name it something else all right then go back to our artwork and go to filter distort displace these settings are all good hit ok it's going to bring up your computer hit one two three the file you just saved and boom this gets us really really close guys that's why I like putting it here um, as you can see, we've already got like a pretty distorted, grungy, ink bleedy looking type of effect. And this puts us in a really nice position to go from here. But one quick note about displacement maps is they're actually really, really easy to experiment with. So I'm going to pull in the background layer that we're going to use for later is the background for our image. Just resize it quickly. You know, just for funsies, let's like twist it around a little bit. Um, but all you have to do is drop stuff into this, basically. And you'll actually get a really nice effect out of it. And again, it's very easy to change. So I'm just going to hit File, Save. 
after that and then go over here and see this little eyeball just click that it'll turn off the effect click it again boom new effect and you know what I actually feel like I kind of like that a little better I like the dots it feels more accurate to the effect we're kind of going for with a photocopy Xerox type of look so we're gonna keep that but always remember that displacement maps are super easy to play around with and also unrecognizable once you get them into Photoshop so from here we're going to go to filter distort and ripple be careful with this one it can come off a little patterny I'm using small um, and as you can see even if I go up into the 876 range I'm getting this like pattern throw off that I don't really love so I try to get it to the point where it's just adding a little bit for me it's probably gonna be right around there 303 percent and then I'm going to go to pixelate filter pixelate and crystallize and this is just going to fix any kind of pattern throw off and always it also give us a little bit of grain around the edges so if you overdo this effect you're going to get this weird mosaic tile thing so be careful with this one i feel like i'm only going to use like 10. all right so that is actually looking really really good we're really really close to our effect and now we can start doing some pretty fun stuff all right, so the first thing I'm going to do, just because I like to put the cart before the horse a lot of times, I'm going to go ahead and drag my background layer in, resize it to my artboard. Not trying to be super specific here, just trying to make it work. And I also don't love how um, dark this is right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit Command-I to invert it. It gives a little bit more of a realistic uh, photocopy texture. And let's go ahead and go to your blend mode and set it to multiply. That way we can just see right through this and we get our text and boom, we are really, really, really close right now. We can start playing with some stuff and making this look pretty cool. So one of the things that we can do, and I always tend to do at the end of these kind of effects, is that it's a little bit redundant, but I go up to filter, blur, and I hit it with a really light Gaussian blur just because I don't want anything to look too crisp. I feel like that makes it look not real. Um, probably about there, 3.9% for me. Another thing I don't want is I don't want this to look too black. So we're going to go up to filter, noise, add noise. And again, I'm not really looking for anything super intense here. I just don't want it to look too overly back. 20, black, 28.33 is what I'm going to stick with for the noise. This is actually looking pretty cool. I'm, I'm actually pretty into this, and I'm actually going to add some noise onto this background as well, probably close to the same amount. A little less, a little less. We're going to go 18.92%. And um, that's getting us really close. And you can actually do a lot from here. So you can resize the crap out of this. You know, you can do whatever it is you want to do with it. Anything you really want to do, it's at your behest. And um, that's what's the cool thing about this effect is we kind of made it to where you can really move it around at the end here with uh, the smart objects and everything. But uh you know, I'm a big fan of this effect. I've used it a lot for clients. I've used it a lot for ritual and Instagram posts and all that stuff. And it's really what you make it. This whole video is just about giving you guys the tools to go on and do your own creative uh, endeavors, create something cool. You know, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the tutorial. As I said, it's a really easy one. I'm a big fan of what we made. Probably put it like right here or something. Um, I think it turned out really cool. This is a very usable effect on creating this kind of vintage, you know, Xeroxy vibe. You can apply it to any kind of image. I know I did it to a really big and bold one, but you can also apply it to drawn images, raster images, even text that you've got on rasterize. Anything you guys want, you guys can apply it. If you do decide to apply it, you post it on Instagram, tag me. All my tags are going to be right here and in the description and all that stuff. Give me a tag, man. Let me see what you've created with it. Uh, that would be super enjoyable for me. I love doing these kind of videos. If you guys want to see more of this kind of content, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop, drop a like. Um, that would be really amazing. Um, and we're going to do some business content and stuff coming up. I really hope you guys had fun and created some cool shit. Thanks for watching.